All right, Colton, we're gonna make you a quick little how-to video on running a long box. Now, this certainly ain't the only way to run a long box by any means. There's lots of different techniques, but um, most of the people I know that are really good at running a long box run it this way, so, or, or very similar to this. Right away, this is your call. <clears throat> Mineralized green poplar with a walnut paddle. And I believe that's deer skin leather. Uh, stitched on it's beautiful anyway uh, first of all is uh, how you actually hold the call you want to hold a long box very loosely now, even though I put a thumb dish on it that's usually when I'm just holding it at rest I, I usually lift my thumb just up off of it when I'm actually calling so you want to call the cantilever off of your pointer finger and hook underneath the back of your thumb so that's how you hold it right there nice and loose you can wrap your fingers up around it but just don't put any pressure on it and let the call rock and do its thing when you're calling very important you don't want to choke a, a long box and then the paddle this is also important the further you hold up on you choke up on the paddle the more coarse the call is going to get the further you call off the back end of the paddle, the clearer, cleaner it's going to get. So you got to hold it in the right spot to get the right kind of tone that you're looking for, the right pitch. So generally speaking, most all of these you want to hold with your your thumb and your middle finger, your bird finger, right there, right on the front part of those two points now I'll, I'll take my pointer finger and put it right in between them just like so and hold this very light very very light uh, basically you're just encapsulating the paddle you're not gripping it um, you know you just want to just want to touch it lightly and the two fingers on the sides just may make the paddle go side to side and the pointer finger you give just the right amount of pressure so Let's talk about purring first. Purring, you've got to have a way to typically anchor your hand on the call. So you want to put your these two fingers in the grooves of the paddle. And this is the only time that you're going to pinch it real tight. You're going to pinch it tight and put some pressure. And you drag the call. get an idea of where it's calling at. So the paddle is pretty well closed. Give it a fast little sharp jerk and you get a really nice cluck out of it. Very nice. Um, yelping um, you can yelp with the paddle flat on both sides meaning it's just it, you stroke it just the way it sits just like that <clears throat> what I generally like to do on the left rail is uh, with the paddle canted in so I hold it in between my two fingers because that's the way I, I like to cackle and cut and I'll tip the paddle over just a little bit so it makes the bottom edge into the call canted in more than the top edge. And most of my calls run that way because that's the way I like to call. But I try to make them all also where they'll run flat. So, yelping. You want to get, start off, you want to come in far enough or high enough, high enough meaning further up the rail, beginning of the rail catch the high they call that the key the whistle I want to get it up there where it whistles then drop down into the off and you give Well, this is this is really kiki.
couple of whistles and drop down into the yaw part of the yelp <clears throat> um, cutting so cutting and yelping are probably going to be the two most valuable calls you're going to make on a on a long box um, cutting uh, same same thing as before i'll hold it in between my two fingers and i'll usually a lot of times i'll put my thumb on the back end of the handle and basically you just pat but it's not not sharp like a cluck so what you're doing here you're holding the, the box real loose and you want the paddle to hit Get your, get your cluck, and you want it to go down the rail just a little when it hits. The call will tip over just a little bit, and the rail will just pass down the rail. The paddle will just pass down the rail just enough to get a little bit of rasp in it. So, because a yelp is a cluck would rasp at the very end. So, that's the difference between the two. Cackle. Cackle is just a, a bunch of fast cutting together. You know, some people will cut like that, thinking they're 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 cutting when they're really cackling. So, but a, a cat a, a cut has a cadence to it, like a uh, one two one one two one kind of a thing. So. And you can throw three or four of them in there. <clears throat> but it's a lot of one, two, one, two, two, one, stuff like that. Uh, gobble. Um, gobbling, basically you just want to wire your, your thumb and your, and your fingers. And you don't really do it just with a U-shape because... All you can do is make the paddle go side to side, and if you tip it up, the paddle can lose its contact with the rails, and you won't get a sound. So I like to, I'll, I'll first I'll grab the call up here, not back here by the handle, so I can control the box better, and why my fingers and back and forth, and you can you can push down a little bit like that with your hands, with your fingers V, and get a little down pressure if you need to. So. And you, you can start up high, work down the rail just a little bit like that if you like to uh, get to change the pitch of the, of the gobble as it's, as it's going through the rattle. So. so what do we cover? We covered the Clucking, uh, clucking. You can uh, you can just do a little pat. Yeah, that is that's another one that you want to hold the call a little bit tight because you don't want to get any rasp in it. Otherwise, you're cutting. So just real soft, little pat. I hold it in between my fingers. Put my thumb on the back to also keep the paddle from from vibrating too much. Um, but another really good way. I think it's even a little more realistic like that. The only thing, if you're calling upside down, it's hard to transition. I mean, you can... You can run your yelping right after that, but I'm just not... I'm just not real proficient at that. I don't like to yelp that way. But it's a master clucker upside down like that. Of course, you can throw in some, some purring. That's about it. I think we covered it all. So again, it's not by any stretch the only way to run a long box. But like I said, most of the people I know that are really good at running one, 
run it basically with that technique. So I hope that helps you. When you get stuck, refer back to that, and uh, you'll pick it up. It won't take you long. You'll have it. And you can always call me if you have any trouble, buddy.